following podcast is being brought to you by the Defy Life Podcast Network. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to Unsupervised, the spinoff. This week, your friendly neighborhood hosts discuss Rona protests, states reopening despite rising infected and death totals, and we determine that we don't support pro sports with no fans in attendance. In our Wacky Stat of the Week, NCAA student-athletes going pro in their sports. The number is very small. In petty party politics, stimulus package, version 2. And in our main topic, why do disasters, pandemics, and any other negative things society deals with impact minority communities so heavily? Y'all enjoy the show. Is anybody home? Is this thing on? We we in we in the building. Oh, sorry, like we in the building. We back. Oh well, shit, y'all already know what I'ma say then. Let's get it then. Everybody, 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 friends, family, fans, welcome back. Unsupervised spinoff podcast, powered only by the Defy Life Podcast Network. Welcome back. Welcome back. Um, make sure you check us out at go to fylife.com, thefylifepods.com, um, and thefylifegear.com, the family of Defy Life, the Defy Life Podcast Network. Um, don't forget to go to our gear page and check out those autism awareness shirts. Um, still Autism Awareness Month, and um, you know we definitely want to support that that cause man um we're back man it's your boy man it's two for tuesday um it's the real himself the real is back i'm here with my co-host as always man my two guys man west coast jay hollywood paul these guys been having me cracking up dying laughing all pre-production and um hey man hollywood paul man how you doing today brother doing good bro doing good how you man Hey man, we what? Seven, hey, I can't even. I don't even remember. Seven, six. Of this quarantine, man. I'm starting to get stir crazy, but I'm making it, man. I'm making it, man. I'm blessed to. I'm blessed to be here and be healthy. And I'm and I'm blessed to be here. I'm blessed to be here with you, man. I'm blessed to be here with you. I appreciate you. Likewise, brother. Likewise. No doubt. Uh, West Coast J. What they do? You know me, I'm over here still ducking and dodging the road, chilling, the usual. I right, finally actually uh, then got to the point where I started snacking recklessly, so I gained all the weight I lost back. Nice, nice. What you snacking on? Yeah, it took a few weeks, but I finally started eating out of boredom. No doubt, no doubt. It, 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 is it is it is it really like even sleeping is starting to get boring? Like taking naps used to be fun for me, and now it's just like fuck. I gotta take another nap to pass some time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly it. Like it goes from eat, sleep, work, eat, sleep, work, smoke. That's pretty much the whole. That's the whole. Eat, sleep, story. work. True. <clears throat> that's how. That's how your day look. It's too simple. Like it's it's too simple. Hey, no doubt, no doubt. We got a little house cleaning, cleaning to do. As always, I want to give a special shout out to our patrons this week. Um, the follow our patrons this week are gonna be Mills Movie Man Rodriguez, who is also a very funny comedian. Y'all should check out his stuff. And uh, Mike Hall. Um, shout out patrons. We couldn't do what we do. Without you, um, special place in our heart, um, and we and we, you guys are part of the reasons why we do this. Um, Patreon.com, go to Fire Life and become a patron. Because go, go ahead and visit that site and uh, become a patron of the Fire Life. You can help support and grow the network, um, allow us to host events and continue to work and support in the community. So, um, Fire Life, man, we're trying to we're trying to do it big. We're trying to do big things. Um, I also want to give a special shout out, man. So, um, 
Defy Life, we had our this week, or actually, I think the show dropped last week, but we had our Defy Life uh, Battleground Championship. So, man, you know, I, 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 our our unsupervised spinoff uh, podcast, we send a we send a delegation. You know, we send our delegation, and um, we we ain't, we ain't do too well. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't do too well. All, all of us had <clears throat> expeditious first round exits, and um. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not too proud of our performance right now, but I do, I do want to give a shout out to Al from the Defy Life podcast, um, the flagship on the network, man, big Al, um, he, he, he bought, he bought the championship home, man. He bought the championship home. And so I just want to say, congratulations, man. You're doing your thing. Um, and that's about all I can stomach about saying about that. You know, I like I like praises for me, not you. Um, <laughs> but shout out, shout out, Al. <clears throat> way to way to bring it home. Um, listeners, yeah, I got that out the way last week with the zip up. No doubt, no doubt. Uh, well, I wanted to officially say it from the sh- from the show. You know, from the show. Um, <clears throat> listeners, I'm saying, I'm sure. officially speak for the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in the intro, you know, some people might have to turned it off at the outro. I don't know, man. I'm just trying to get it out there for the people. Just trying to get it out there for the people. Um, man, look, can I can I get to the next to the next note to the next note? Please, thank you. Please continue, my good brother. No doubt, no doubt. Um, listeners, make sure you check out this week's episode of the Defy Life, the Defy Life podcast. Um, great group on the show. We are that was our Defy Life podcast draft day episode. So I definitely want to give a shout out to the members, the the Defy Life podcast team. Um, Jay, uh, Pooh, Al, uh, myself, um, from this show, uh, regular Scott and Terrence, uh, guest, 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 guest host Terrence was also on that show. So shout out to you, regular shout out to you, Terrence and everybody that was on that show. It, um, it, it, it dropped today. And, um, so if you want to get, get a quick look in, at our mock draft, um, go out there and, um, live with us a little bit, man. It's a dope show. Um, the Defy podcast. It was totally uh, entertaining. Uh, regular Scott, though, I got some questions about your Raiders picks. Um, I got questions about a linebacker out of Wisconsin, I believe, as well. <laughs> yo, I gave, yo, I gave regular both sides of the roast on that one. Oh, man. man. He caught him from both barrels from everybody. Everybody emptied the clips. I couldn't let him skate with that one, man. Like I, I tried to, I tried to, but I just couldn't. Uh, it's a great show, man. Um, check it out, check it out. Oh man, my guys, man. What's Coach Jamin? How was your week? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was a holiday week, so it was a little more smoky than normal. Oh, what that mean? You know, but other than that, pretty much went over it. It's been uh, eat, sleep, smoke, work, lather, rinse, repeat for some weeks now. Like, I can't even act like it's not all I'm doing. It's all I'm doing. I don't trust outside. Still don't trust Arona. Still don't trust other people. So, uh, I've been in the house. When's the last time you made a, a like a store run, something like that? I mean, I'm usually if I do that, it takes maybe 15 total minutes. So I haven't had to go to the grocery store in at least a couple of weeks. But to run and pick up smoking utensils, that's like a 15 minute turnaround. And even when I do that, I'm fully masked up, all the et cetera, it's like walking around looking like Scorpion or Sub Zero. No doubt. No doubt. Well, hey, be be safe out there, man. Be safe out there. Um, I talked to I talked to a guy, a, a buddy of mine today, and um, I was telling him like the craziest shit I seen, and he was like, "Nah, I got you beat." He told me he seen um, a dude in a fucking like astronaut suit, like like, like a full I don't NASA. Yeah, like, I don't know where he got the shit from, but he was like, yo, my man's came in here with a full, like, NASA astronaut suit on with the helmet and everything. Like, 
like that he was, it was one of the helmets that had the four sides like the one the, the glass in the front the glass on the side the glass on the side and the glass in the back and he was like man i i it took everything it took everything for me not to fall out laughing but hey i, I was he said because but i understand people out here doing what they got to do you know but he said i done definitely seen some crazy shit so man Shout out to you, my man's with the NASA suit on, man. I don't have a NASA suit, but if I did, I might wear that shit during the corona, too. Yeah, I can't act like I wouldn't wear a cosmonaut suit. I couldn't act like I wouldn't do it. Oh, is that the official name, a cosmonaut suit? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would, I would go with Russian cosmonaut. No doubt. A cosmonaut suit. I, I, I like what I was saying, too. I don't know. Hollywood Paul, man, how was your week, brother? Oh, shit, man. You know me. I'm just chilling, bro. It's been a good week. Blessed to be here again, as always. You know, uh, don't take a day for granted. I've been, I've been, I've been licking the lottery like a motherfucker with these scratch offs, boy. I'm gonna tear their ass up. But uh, so that's that's been cool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Other than that, just been chilling, man. No doubt, no doubt. Hey, well, this is guys. This is episode twelve, man. I don't even know if I said that. It's episode twelve. Uh, a cool dozen. And um, we don't brought we don't brought this thing brought this thing to y'all eleven times. Um, West Coast man, let them know where else they can get us. No question. You can catch us on Spreaker, iTunes, iHeartRadio, uh, Google Play Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and pretty much anywhere else you get your podcast needs filled. No you can doubt. Also no email doubt. Us. You can oh, email where, where? us. At unsupervised at gotofylife dot com, we ain't got no emails from nobody. I feel the proverbial type of way, but hey, it ain't like y'all stuck in the house with nothing else to do except email this show. I'm just saying. That's right. Get out there and do it. And if they wanted to find the show on social media, Hollywood Paul, where would they do that? We need to go to facebook dot com and type in unsupervised the spinoff podcast. There, they can like, share, and comment. And enter their chance to win a free night stay at a Marriott location of their choosing. Mm, dope. Yeah, dope. Man, all you gotta do is like, comment, or share, man. You don't gotta do all three. Just do one of them. Just it's hey, be easy on you, man. You know what I'm saying? You little bums. <laughs> hey, hey, and it has been happening. It has been happening. Uh, Absolutely. I've, I've, we we have entries into that. So if you want to get your name in that. Um, go ahead and do. I'm not really sure when we're gonna do the cutoff. I'll, I'll let you know. Hollywood Paul got all that under, under control. That's his thing. But me and West Coast trying to party with y'all, and um, West Coast a fool out here. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so you know, I'm I'm more chill and laid back. You, your your party is dry, and and invite the homie West Coast J, aka Johnny Drama. The man makes a great drink. Okay, he's a great bartender. Pretty good DJ, depending on the night, depending on the night. But the man definitely knows how to throw a good party or host one for the matter. No doubt. Yeah, that's because I walk in this motherfucker every time, ready to get it cracking up in this bitch. <laughs> but yeah, man, check us out on Facebook. Definitely thank you all, everyone who's been liking, commenting, and sharing so far. I appreciate you. Please continue to tell your friends about us. Please continue to spread it around and share, like, comment, and uh, enter everything for our free giveaway. No doubt. Any of those platforms that you find us on, definitely rate us, man. Five star rate us. Five star rate us, man. We 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 want that. We need that. So we appreciate it. Um, no further ado, man. Let's 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 get into it, man. Um this week on our weekly COVID nineteen, the coronavirus weekly update, we we had some I, I saw some weird shit happening this week, y'all. Like, um, West Virginia, Virginia, um, even North Carolina, Michigan. Um, these these states, the, there were there are people in the states that are protesting their governor's mansions to have their governors reopen their states. Um. Have y'all been paying attention to the little protests going on with the people the saying uh, you got people still saying it's a hoax. You got people still saying it's a ploy by the media and the Democrats to keep Trump from getting reelected. You still got people saying all all kinds of just crazy shit. 
And um, they're saying just reopen, just reopen it. We need, we want. I need a haircut. Got to go back to work. Got to do this. Got to do that, man. So, um, <laughs> chime in on that, man. Um, Hollywood Paul, what you think about that? What's going What's going on with these people, man? They got a legitimate argument, or they just need to shut the fuck up and stay in the house. Mm, until they can irrefutably, without a shadow of a doubt, prove otherwise, they need to shut the fuck up and stay in the house. Um, better stay in the house and let this die out if it is, quote-unquote, not a hoax. Um, if it is a hoax, prove it. And then uh, I'm all on board with you. I love the conspiracy. Um, but, <clears throat> you know... As far as opening it back up and all that, I wouldn't take the chance um, with reported deaths and actual bodies that cameras can record. You know, this is this is a big conspiracy for all the low level, you know, essential workers to all lie on the same thing. And they're not all in the same city at the same facility. That's a real, really good coordinated hoax. Um, but um, but yeah, man, you know, prove it. Uh, that's all I gotta say. Um, I, I hate to be that guy that's like, look it up, prove it, but yeah, I mean, until this teeth to say otherwise, I mean, I would just stay in the house just in case. What's Coach J, man? What? It, what's what's going on? Are, they, are these guys are they are they bored? Do they just want to stretch their legs a little bit because they've been in the house for five weeks? Like, what's what's up with the protest? I think it's a clever combination of a lot of things. Um, it actually took longer than I thought it was going to before people started doing dumb shit. I think you remember initially when it started, us, I, I said it was going to be something like eight to ten days. It took about three weeks, four weeks, before people started being like, you know what? I ain't even, this shit is stupid. I don't even like you anymore, and I'm leaving, and I'm going out anyway. Um, but then there's places where it starts to get a little dangerous. In Lansing, Michigan, mm. protesters blocked streets and ambulances needed to get to and from a hospital. In Kentucky, mm. protesters were drowning out the governor trying to hold a briefing on the pandemic's latest developments. Like, there's... It's one thing to be mad that you're stuck in a house. It's another thing to put other people in danger. Like, that's just... Not only is that selfish, but that is the this, the worst kind of people. That's the worst it's kind dumb as of fuck. protest. It's dumb as fuck, is what it is. Like, you're endangering other Americans because what exactly? You think that your governor is trying to keep you in the house because he wants to or she wants to? Or mm. could it possibly be that maybe they're trying to keep this death toll from getting to the 180,000 that they initially said it was? Now they've dropped that back down to 60 and we're somewhere around 45 if I'm thinking about it right. Yep. We crashed so 45 like the, yesterday. It's not like the stopgap measures have not worked. Like, they are they are working. Yes, they are. But they're saying things like what they're the, – I was saying they're supposed to reopen Georgia uh, Friday, like barbershops and hair salons and tattoo parlors and then uh, restaurants on Monday with, like, limited hours and they've got to separate their tables so that everybody's still socially distanced and there's all kinds of stuff that's going on. But the death tolls aren't dropping. The people are still getting infected with it. So if you open early, well, then this is that second wave that everybody spoke on. I don't remember who it was that said it. It was somebody on the network that said, man, we're going to be like this till the middle of June. And it's looking um, that way. Dog, it, it, it's, it's looking that way. Um, I, I hope, you know, I hope we get some sort of a summer, um, but we, we just don't know. We just don't know. Um, there, as I think as long as there are states like New York and New Jersey, where this is heavily, heavily pounding the shit out of them. Um, California is another state that they, they think they have just a couple hundred thousand people in LA Walking around with it, and, and, and well, not walking around with it because they're 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 on lockdown. But like, they think they have a couple hundred thousand people that have it that may have infected people, and they don't know. So they're really scared. Um, yeah, for LA, they've got a thing with the homeless people. Like they're 
The, if one of their homeless people gets infected, there's hundreds of thousands of homeless people on the streets of L.A. Right. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. Well, let's let's West Coast. You mentioned it. Well, we got a couple states, a few states saying that they're they're reopening. Um, now, the Trump administration's guideline says if you're going to reopen, you got to reopen in what three phases? And the first phase is you've got to have con- fourteen or two weeks consecutive days of drops in new cases and all that type of stuff. Well, Georgia and South Carolina are not in that. Pre- they're not in that category at all. Georgia's their line's going straight up, actually. Um, but Georgia and South Carolina has decided to reopen. Um, now, granted, they're reopening with some, you know, quote unquote, they have a plan and they have information. But um, what y'all think about that, man? Georgia, South Carolina, y'all glad y'all don't live there? What's, what's going on with, with those two states? Sounds dumb as fuck to me. Right off Georgia <clears throat> right now. Atlanta right. is... The, the, the places that have the biggest death counts or the biggest infected counts are the most populous places. So somebody in Albany, Georgia, might not feel the same way or be exposed the same way somebody just in Atlanta would be. So I feel oh. like if you're gonna if you're gonna start opening stuff, then people are gonna start getting sick again. And then you're gonna have to oh. close it again. What indefinitely? I just, I don't know, because I don't think a lot of people realize that, like, the majority of the reason that we're social distancing isn't necessarily to keep people from getting, like, sick. Like, that's a that's a byproduct of the distancing. The, 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 the primary reason that we're distancing is to not have two, three, four million people in the hospital at the same time. It would exactly. literally it would literally crash everything. You think the economy stopped now? If if that happens, it the the effects that you're gonna feel if we crash our healthcare system is nothing like we're feeling right now. Um millions at, at that point, literally millions of people would die. And so I don't think people really understand the importance of the distancing. Um, like like you said earlier, West Coast, it's not that the governors just aren't trying to keep you at home because they fucking want to keep you at home. Like they know how many beds they have. They know how many hospitals they have. They know how many tests they can do. They know how many, fib- you know, respirators and fibrillators they have. Like – and they know what those things can produce. And if they if they max that number out, we are fucked. And so that's what the social distancing is designed to keep from happening. Now, granted, if we if we're in the house, we really, you know, we really shouldn't be able to get it. But it's, it's just so important to understand the reason why we're doing it. It's not the you know, we, no one wants you to go broke. No one wants you to lose anything. Um, I actually got a an email about the CARE Act um, yesterday, and lo and behold, my student loans are – I have a zero balance. I have a zero payment due. I don't have a monthly payment. I don't even have like a – like I don't even have a due date. And so every like everything when I log into my student loans is zero. And I was like, oh, my goodness. So it's just – they they are trying to do things to help people through this time. Now, granted, it's not a punishment. It's it's to help, right? Right, so right, are taking it right. As a punishment. They're they're just doing, and I and and whether you, Republican, Democrat, Independent, whatever, there are fifty governors out there that are trying like hell to get. Well, maybe forty eight because uh, Georgia and South Carolina. Whew, I don't know, but there's there's a, there's fifty governors out there that's trying to keep their citizens safe. And they're not getting a. They're lo and behold, they're really not getting that much help from the federal government. Um, so, you know, yeah, it's crazy, man. Woo. Either anyway, way, it's frustrating, man. Like the, if they would just let it die out, but nope. The slogans, like I'm sitting there reading through something and uh, some of the slogans made me laugh. Um, no new normal. 
uh, our rights trump your fear. And my my favorite one is my body, my choice, <laughs> which is clearly just taking shots at people who for abortion right. And there's so well, many people calling I... these astroturf protests, which is <laughs> they're defining it as an artificial product of an organized bid for media coverage that ultimately undermines what polls suggest is in fact broad public support for the stay at home yeah. orders. Oh yeah. No no nobody's nobody's moving. Nobody's moving. And so just be on your P's and Q's, man. If you live in one of those states where your governor's talking about you lay reopening, man, you still gotta make your own decisions to keep you and your family safe. So, you know, definitely do that. You Anybody know what's crazy? else Yeah, what? When I was a kid, right? <clears throat> it's just maybe I just thought about this. When I was a kid, my, my parents used to tell me um, now, my friends were allowed to. It was just two-lane road that ran. It was the main road that ran through our neighborhood. Parents used to tell me I couldn't cross it, right? My friends were able to all the time. It was nothing. Just cross the road. Well, two kids had died on that road, but it happened when my older sibling was in middle school. She's 10 years older than me. So uh, that, that situation was so far removed from me, I didn't feel the gravity of it. I didn't understand why my parents had me on that lockdown to prevent something bad from happening. One day I decided to cross the road and went to the store with my friends on the way back. We were, you know, riding the bikes in the middle of the lanes, make believing that we were playing chicken. Somehow, some way, we didn't notice a car speeding around a corner, going about 50 miles an hour around a corner. He hit me and a friend of mine. He clipped the back wheel of my bike, threw me in the ditch, and uh, he hit my, my friend pretty good. But neither one of us broke anything. Grace of God I walked away without a scratch, and um, my bike was tore up. And I, when I told my parents what happened, they were like, "Well, you see why we told you to, to stay your ass <laughs> from going across that street." And I'm like, "Yeah, you know, I think I got hit and hurt really bad." It was like, "Yes, this is. It wasn't a punishment to keep you from going across the street. It was to help you." But me seeing my friends move around and do what they want, thinking, "Oh, it's, my parents are. They're just, you know." overthinking it it's bullshit no kid really died here no kid got hit you know on this street you know thinking of all the reasons why i should be able to cross this street it shouldn't be no big thing well i go across it something bad happens so i'm hoping that this situation doesn't reflect in my lesson about crossing the street you know i right. just really do because it seems like that's that's what's going to happen and my mother even said it took something bad to happen to me for me to really understand why they were trying to prevent it in the, in the beginning. But hopefully, you know, that was a lesson I could walk away from easy. Uh, hopefully it doesn't get to that in our society. No doubt. No doubt. Well, uh, but, but co- people got to be, be reminded though sometimes. I mean, unfortunately it's like, it's kind of like you think about stories in the Bible or the book of Mormon, like they constantly have to show God's power because people constantly forget sometimes, you know, Life happens, and they, they. I guess it's sad to say, but like, to, they sometimes people got to be reminded of the of the death tolls of people dropping dead, and and how serious this is, so that these protests wouldn't be happening. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I, and, and some and some of it, some I think some of it is just a complete lack of empathy, um, because they're so I, far I, removed. You know, it's yeah, not happening. Like, kind of like me uh, crossing that road. You know. Yeah, so so fact. much, it's such a lack of empathy with, and I don't, I don't get it. Um, the same people that scream that this, what well, this is America, this is America, and you know, so yeah, these these are Americans that are getting f- fucked up right now. Um, these are people, these are n- nurses that are having to wear trash bags because they don't have equipment. These are, you know, what I'm saying? Like it's crazy out there right now. Um, right. right. So, you know, everybody be safe. West, West Coast, you want to touch that before we move on? Y'all, y'all good or? No, I mean, I'm looking at the poll numbers. Um, and as of four hours ago, despite these protests, more than 70% of Americans still support the stay at homes. And I'm looking through a bunch of different ones. So the number is not below 60%. And then I've seen it as high as 80. But most people are okay with. Look, I know we're just trying to stay safe. I know that that's all we're trying to do. So let's let this pass. But the loud minority is once again the key here. 
Like, there's very few people who are actually protesting and who actually feel the way the protesters do, but they're loud. And so that's they're, the problem. We're listening to the one person screaming and not paying attention to the other 99 people. Well, I don't know how much attention they're get, they're getting. Um, I, I, now, I think on the local level, I think governors are definitely feeling the the pressure to reopen their their state economies. But it's not just, you know, it, it's not just like for the economy to work, everything has to be open. Healthcare has to be he, healthcare has to be working. Um, education has to be working because kids got to be back at school. So they're, you know, so their parents can go to work. There's no, like all of this stuff is so connected that and I just think people don't understand that. Like, so, okay, if we send everybody back to work, well, then schools are still out. So what are you going to do about that? Then you go, are you going to find childcare? Are you going to hire babysitters? Are you going to like, what What are you going to do? You, like, you can't just go marching on the protest. All this stuff works together. So, you know tough you gotta you gotta deal with it because it's all connected hey man speaking of um you know the things dealing with this the coronavirus uh west coast i know you're um hollywood paul you a wrestling fan west coast i know you are oh yeah okay no so we got two wrestling fans on the show What, what was the last big event like last week was it wrestlemania or something Royal Rumble? I don't know what it was. What What was the last big wrestling event that was like last week? No, I don't have a clue. Like, I'm not a wrestling mm-hmm. fan. I'm a UFC fan. Oh, my bad. I didn't mean to play you. Hold on. Hold on. Let me look it up. So, I, I really don't know. This is this is where we would need the regulars to regular Scots. Dude is knee deep in the wrestling. I think it was WrestleMania. I think it was. Yeah, yeah, WrestleMania. That's like their Super Bowl. Well, um, yeah, I bring that up. WrestleMania. They didn't have any fans out there. Yeah, I would say I bring that up because they had WrestleMania with not a soul in the not a soul in the crowd, and um, they still it was still televised on TV, and I've I've heard talks that the NHL may play their playoffs. Um, without fans in the crowd, and if the NHL is willing to do it, the WrestleMania is willing to do it. Maybe the NBA is willing to do it. So I wanted to kind of chime in on this and get y'all's thoughts on well, what do y'all think about our major sports and sporting events happening with no fans in the crowd? Like, is it still does that take some of the lore of the event? Are you with that? Are you not with that? Are you on both sides of that coin? Uh, Hollywood Paul, what you thinking, man? Mm, part of me is with it, selfishly wanting to see, you know, some sports. But another part of me is like, yeah, nah, that ain't cool. Like, what's what's the game without the fans? We're just in the backyard playing now. You know, just show anybody on TV playing, I guess. I mean... You know, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I guess it'd be like us watching the summer open runs at the Black Ops gym with Chris Brickley. It'd be kind of like that, mm-hmm. I guess, um, which is cool to some degree. But you don't want to watch like, you know, a whole hour and 90 minutes worth of it. Calling right. timeouts and stuff like that. I just think it would get stagnant and stale without, you know, and I hope they have the commentator still. <laughs> I mean, because at least that. We'll, we'll get it. You know, you hear that guy go, James goes up, bang! You know, and he hits that shot, and the crowd goes wild. I mean, that is that. I mean, that makes you jump out of your seat when you're at home. You know, I mean, that makes you, you and your friends who are watching the game, like all celebrate in unison, like or or you know, talk shit to the one guy who's not a fan of the team. Everybody else is. I mean, that's that moment. That's that's part of it. To just, I don't know, to just experience that without it. I, I don't. I, I'm kind of. I don't know. I don't know what to think about it. All right, no doubt. Well, you you think about it. I'm gonna switch. To, so I'm gonna switch gears to West Coast J. West Coast J. Um, NBA playoffs. It's the finals. I, I not, you know what? It doesn't even have to be the finals because the playoffs are amazingly exciting. Even if you're in the first round. Um, what what do you think of? Well, first round, you're in the playoffs. Your team in the playoffs, and 
it's not a, it's not a soul in the arena. What you thinking? That's a little creepy. It's a little <laughs> it's a little weird because it for the WWE. Like those athletes are also acting out of script, so there's also that they've got, you know, they they know what's going to happen, what's supposed to happen, etc. For the playoffs, it's, I'm pretty much where Hollywood Paul is. Like the crowd, there are some players who get better when the crowd is chanting, the crowd is making noise for them. There are other players who shrink when the crowd is booing them. All of that is part of being a professional athlete. Like mm. the, the roar of the crowd is part of the key. Right. So if we're just sitting here watching them, like I'm with him. There's is like it'll be it may be more intense, it may be more we don't know what it'll be, but without some fans egging you on, you might not get super hype about it, you know? If somebody no. hits you with a hard foul and you got a, a random somebody yelling obscenities at you and you get angry or whatever you know that anger doesn't necessarily it's not there that anger translates into the way that you play right it's sometimes good sometimes bad it depends on the player but the interaction is the key like without that interaction what is the point um are they just doing it to stay in shape because if that's the case i mean they don't necessarily have to televise that and if they're televising it are they really only doing it for gambling purposes because there's no admission, you know, that, I mean, how are they going to charge, you know, for the tickets to watch the game? I mean, they're, they're, how they, they're not. How they're making just, money. Is, is that what I'm saying? It's well, weird. well mo- weird. In, in sports today, most of the time, like the, the ticket sale and the concession stands is just like icing on the cake. Most of these teams make their money off the TV deals. So I get like, so not having these sports on TV is actually costing billions not having these fans in the seats is costing some, but not like not like not being able to have this shit on ESPN three times three you know what I'm saying, three times a week and then TNT three times a week. And then, so that's really where the pockets are being hurt. But the concession these days, like back in the sixties, seventies and eighties before these monster T V deals got signed, yeah, the, the, a lot of owners and the leagues made their money off of ticket sales and stuff that happened at the stadiums, but it's completely different now. Like it's it's all about the advertising and, and the TV deals, um, but they do make some money. But that's just like that's like they summer money these days. Like oh, I'm gonna spend this, you know, fifty million on a new Bentley or whatever, whatever they buy. I don't know. I don't. But um, so there is value in having the game because the game will be on TV. There that means they're not losing that revenue. They would just be losing the 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 gate, the ticket gate revenue, concessions revenue, and things like that. Um, but I, I mean, all of us played sports, so I, I completely agree. Without without, there's something about fans that just make the game different. Like if that's the case, it's just a pickup game. Like so, one, I do think that the competition will be there. So because anytime you step on the court or you step on the ice or whatever you're playing. And you start to compete once that whistle blows, you are competing. Um, but West Coast, you hit the nail on the head. Like having those fans there to either make you or sway you or diminish you or whatever that that power that fans have. I don't know, man. Is it? Is it? Is it you, y'all think it's like a glorified practice? Yeah, I think it is. I'm gonna come I mean, back to you. I think it is because at the end of the day, it's sports entertainment where they're there to entertain people. Yeah, they can entertain us from home, but imagine a comedian telling jokes in a room full of no one. I mean, I know I've been on stage before and um, I can tell a good story and I, I react to the crowd when I tell a story. I'm, you know, and I'm, I'm working on the nuances of how to feed off of the crowd. You know, they're lacking one part of the story. I can, I can rant on that for a little while and get some more laughs. You know, it's just like West Coast was saying. You know, like so when I played sports, like the anticipation, the butterflies. You know, like one, once the crowd got behind you, you know, something happened and the crowd starts booing. You know, all that shit. Like it, it, it makes the entertainment. It makes the show better. <laughs> 
because that's what it is. They're putting on a show for us. Um, just to televise it with no fans, I think it's uh, it it cheapens the show. What I can say, it kind of makes it a little little cheesy, you know? Right. Yeah, I I know, I do know. Um, it's like I don't watching, know. it's like watching um, Top Gun, right? You mm-hmm. see Maverick and Iceman, and you know, oh, Goose. You see them flying around. Right. And uh, then you watch Hot Shots Part 2, right? <laughs> right. It's, it's, it's kind of like doing that. It's, it's yeah. like, damn, or watching that movie, or watching Any Given Sunday, and then watching The Replacements. Right. You know, it it, it, it just changes the entire dynamic of, of what we're getting here. So if that happens, West Coast, you going to watch? Maybe is the end. I mean, I, I feel like I'd watch the first one, and the I'd figure it out from that point forward whether or not this is something I would rather spend ninety minutes watching. Um, and then when you, because they're still gonna, they're gonna, if they televise it, they're gonna put commercials in. So no, no doubt, deal with no commercial doubt. breaks. Yeah, it's just but, gonna be like a real game, except there's no 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 fans. That's what I'm saying. Like the the roar of the crowd. <laughs> or even the visuals of the crowd, the little exactly. Things, one of, have you ever watched images? a game when people are leaving at the end of the game? You see how boring that part of the game is. It's not because it's over; it's because it's boring. There's no one cheering. There's no one egging them on. There's nothing going on. It's just like practice, right? Man, the images of the crowds in the backgrounds are some of the most iconic images. Like you see when you see people. In the behind free throws being dumb, or when you see people <laughs> react outlandishly when somebody gets smashed on, like that's part of the game. It's part of the it's part of the allure. It's part of the entertainment pro- package. I mean, that yes. affects the player who just got smashed on. His morale may be demoralized at that moment, or he could be wanting to get his face back and play harder. Right, or you shoot an air ball and you don't have. 20,000 people yelling at you airball. Right. Like, you, it, you it, might just, not, it might not phase you at all. You, your game may still be like you're in practice. You could just bounce back. Yeah, that's part of it. Part of it is having them people on your back yelling airball. Like, right. I've, I've, I've had it done. Like, it doesn't – It's not. <laughs> you you hear it. Like, you know you just shot an airball. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so you – no, but well, let me ask y'all this because I I got to and 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 listeners, I want y'all to chime in, man. This could be a great topic for you to email us about or comment on on Facebook on on, on the page. What 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 are y'all are y'all feeling this? Are y'all thinking that you know um I I, I might watch it if they do, but I got I I, I want to throw something in at you. What if just because of the times that we're in, what if the league say okay, who's ever at home? We're gonna pump crowd noise in for you. We're gonna we're gonna I play crowd support noise. Support it. What what you think? It's gonna you know, be oh, like watching Top Gun. <laughs> y'all don't like that either. Shots part do. We're literally is gonna. I mean, I just mentioned I was gonna make it cheesy. I mean, we're literally gonna start just putting it on in the background and doing whatever and catching glimpses of it. It might be just better just to watch Sports Center for the fucking highlights. I mean, are you going to put sounds in it? It's going to be like watching a cheesy stand-up or, or a cheesy sitcom, you know, with, with the crowd in the background going, ooh, ah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's fake. It's, it's, you're going to know it is. It's going to be cheesy. Like, I mean, you're, you're really going to try to substitute a crowd when, when blocked by James, and you, you're going to have the crowd reacting to that, and, 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 and it's going to be fake? That's going to make the, I don't know. That, I don't know about that one. Mm. I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> it's not sitting yeah, well with much me. More concise, like I just don't support it. <laughs> no, 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 no pumped in crowd noise because they can do that. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, yeah they can they do that. Famously, do it in practice. Ah, they do. They do. Well, I'm saying what, what, what I'm saying is, would that make it more realistic to you guys? Even though the uh, empty, even though the arena is empty, if they, you know, if it's the Bruins versus the Capitals, and like, and they pumping in some of that 
you know, some of that Bruins um, Garden, you know, TD Garden crowd noise. Is that, will that do it for you? Is that, or is that, is that too inauthentic? It's far too inauthentic for me. Like, if you're going to have a crowd, be a crowd. If you're not, like, you're, you're making up when you decide somebody is being raucous and uproarious. Come on with that. Like, that doesn't make well, any I'm, sense to me. Well, I mean, we, we've watched enough sports to know when the crowd's going to get into the game and when they're not. Like, you know, it's, you know, we, we do know that. Like, if you, you know, like, if, if it's hockey and you go on a power play or you get a big hit, like, them fans, gonna, they're going to let you hear it. Um, you know, if you if if they you keep the if the puck is in the zone for a long time and they got they moving everybody all the all the anticipation that we about to score like the crowd start to get hype like so they, we've watched enough of these sports to know when the crowd gets hype you know you done you was down by twenty but you done cut it to eight with six minutes left like we and and, and, and you know you you we know the crowd gonna start to get behind you at that point you know what I'm saying so I think they might could simulate it that's that's all I'm saying. Y'all, my co-hosts do not like that. <laughs> I, just, I, I, I don't like it. I just don't like it, you know? I don't like it. No doubt. No doubt. Well, let us know, listeners, Leo. What y'all, what y'all think about that? I think it's a very intriguing topic. I, now, once again, I'm not a, I'm not a, I have to ask, maybe we'll ask a regular Scott, but did y'all know if they pumped in crowd noise in the WrestleMania? Or did they, was it really just announcers and the dudes wrestling? I don't know. I didn't watch it. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't watch it either. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll ask because you know, re- regular. I've been hearing was, mixed reviews from my wrestling fran- fans and friends. Well, regular, let us know. Uh, hit me, hit me on the book and let me know if they if they did the pumped in crowd noise and let me know what you think on this topic as well, a- along with everybody else, along with everybody else. Oh man, sheesh. West Coast J, we're gonna move on from this topic, man. But what we're not gonna move on is the next part of our segment without a commercial. So um, why don't you let, it, let us get something? Yeah, let's go ahead and pay some bills. Y'all stay tuned. We'll be back after this brief message. If you're into all things comics, you have to check out Take a Knee for Marvel vs. DC, your go-to podcast for comic and superhero discussion, debates, polls, and more. Tune in as regular Scott and Ozzy Killmonger Chat about your favorite comic topics, and you never know who may show up for an open mic or what will be next on their favorite One Gotta Go. Take a knee for Marvel vs. DC every Sunday, powered by the Defy Light Podcast Network. And we back up in this. Yeah, man, y'all. Give a listen to uh, regular Scott and Uncle Oz on Take a Knee for Marvel vs. DC. I know Scott and get. He getting all the love on this show right now. Uh, he is, man. You know what? Regular degular. Regular degular, man. We, you know what? Let's go ahead and extend the invite. Um, host of Marvel, take a knee versus. I'm uh, sorry, host of Take a Knee for Marvel versus DC, um, the unsupervised spinoff podcast. Officially invites both of you guys to be guests on our show. Um. When y'all would y'all want that to maybe be a next week thing or the week after next? What y'all thinking? It's whatever. No it's doubt. Lucky number thirteen move. No doubt. Okay, so we'll go with the we'll go with the baker's dozen. Isn't that what they call thirteen? A baker's dozen? That's what they call it. Show lives. No day. Well, I will be reaching out. I will be reaching out to that show to see if we can get those guys on here, man. Um, Marvel versus yeah, Marvel versus DC. Um, take a knee, man. Let's get it, man. Regular Scott, Uncle Oz, man. We love to have you. Um, so hope to talk to you soon. Yeah, the Oz rants and the Paul rants together. That's 24 <laughs> minutes worth of entertainment. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Hey, man, it's wacky Saturday week time. Um, since we're talking about sports, this stat is about sports. Um, and it's, it's a stat that we've heard before, but. You know, it may, it may be something that listeners are not aware of, um, but I picked this because we were we've been kind of talking about sports, and I wanted to kind of stay in that same realm. Um, being the sports says that you guys are, I'm sure that you guys know this, but and we've actually said this stat on the show before, but let's get that out here. Um, fewer than two percent of NCAA student athletes 
actually go on to go play that sport at a professional level. Um, that is not a lot. And, of course, that percentage varies uh, based on the sport that you play. Like with basketball, I think it's 6%. Uh, football, I think, was less than that. Um, but um, let's chime in and talk about that a little bit. Um, the NCAA actually revealed, um, with the, all the stiff competition, that you know fewer than two percent of their NCAA collegiate athletes uh, go pro. And so, um, what do, what are y'all thoughts on that? Uh, West Coast J, man, chime in a little bit. Well, first, I'm trying to figure out how many athletes there are, how many student athletes there are total. A whole lot, but I know that doesn't. That's not an official number, but you know, some, you know, some college and universities carry like twenty two, twenty three Division one or Division two sports. You know, and all those kids, and you know, so it's quite, and then all those universities, so it's quite a few. I don't, but I don't know. Right, according like, to yeah. NCAA.org, we're looking at 460,000 student athletes that compete in 24 different sports. Mm, I was right. I was, what did I say, 23? I was damn near close. Um, yeah, I didn't know the number of that. That's a lot. That's, a, that's damn. That's almost, that's, that's, pretty, that's like, that's like Cleveland. <laughs> so we're looking at 460,000. Then you're looking at about 9,200 of those. <laughs> at two percent, so less than ten thousand. I mean, let's be honest. When you get to the professional ranks of sports, in particular, a lot of those teams for almost anything, and except maybe baseball with their farm team. Because baseball, they'll be there. That's the one where you've got probably the best shot to make the pros because there's hundreds of players in an organization. Once you get from the show to triple A to double A to single A, right? Like there's a way to get through there and still be considered a semi pro ball player or a ball player. So I'm guessing that a lot of these 9,200 probably end up in those ranks. Because even for hoop, like to play professional hoop in the United States, like how, what are the two rounds in the draft? Yep, two rounds, and then they got <clears throat> the G League, you know, overseas, uh, semi-pro okay, Canadian so League. just to get to the um, NBA, every year there's only six five hundred men play people active. that get picked. True. And then everybody else goes through the other organizations. Like they, that becomes the triple A, the double A's, or playing overseas in a different professional league. True. So, like the the more than anything, when you talk to a, a former student athlete that did not make it pro, most of the time what they talk about are the lessons that they learned, the discipline that they got, the work ethic that they got for being able to go through it. So it doesn't surprise me that it's because it's, it's really difficult to become a professional athlete. Like it looks glamorous and it looks, they make it look easy. Most of them at the very least. Mm -hmm. So it did the work that's involved in it is spent for most of your life. It's like training for an Olympics like that. That's just years of your time just gone because that's all you're training for. Whereas these student athletes get the whole college experience most of the time, unless they are like, you know, you've got your blue chippers that are definitely going to go to the pros, and we knew that when they were recruited. But then you get your other ones, your 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 people that show up at school and they really just are amazing athletes and walk onto something. Right. You know, so will they make it pro? It's rare, but it happens. So. I mean, the numbers make sense just to, to because to become a professional athlete is really difficult. Mm. <clears throat> I'm I'm reading now that the number the number of maximum players in the NBA is 450 at any given time. Yeah, I'm gonna say 450, 500 that get to be active. 
something like that. It's a very it used to be four hundred until you know they added the teams on. But, uh, wow, that's why the wow. G League is so big. You know that's that's what that's what makes that so important because guys can, you know, who have like West Coast was saying, dedicated their lives to something like especially who who starts at such a young age, especially nowadays, um, and it's so involved. Um, the thing is, um, there's a. Uh, it's just they didn't have a lot of opportunities that they didn't make it pro, and a, a lot, a very few of them. You know, you look at an overseas roster; they're not packed with brothers. You know what I'm saying? They're not packed with white dudes. They're packed with people from that that country. So you have one or two, maybe maybe about four or five on a roster of fifteen, maybe twenty with injured reserve. So it wasn't like guys were just going overseas left and right either. So the G League is so big because it gives that opportunity for a guy to make half a million, 800,000, you know, um, 2.3 million or something like that per season and still be considered a professional athlete. You know, um, you can call G League semi-pro all you want, but that's, that's a pro team. You're getting, you're getting paid better than a lot of people that work in call centers for five, six, ten 10 years just to play a child's games. That's why it's so huge, you know, and in other sports like, like football doesn't have that for the most part. Um, I don't really know if hockey has it or not, but baseball has really, has really been big in that by having all those uh, extra opportunities for athletes to still make a living doing something that they've dedicated, you know, majority of their life to, but just didn't make it to the main stage. If that makes sense. It's kind of like off Broadway or off, off Broadway. No doubt. No doubt. Well, I don't know, man. That's like I said, said some. So for some sports, just because that league carries more players and things like that, it, it, that can that number varies a little bit just based on the sport. I know professional baseball, even if you're, you know, quadruple A or triple A or double single A or whatever, you're still considered a professional baseball player. And then so, I mean, those teams can have, you know. 25 people on the the oh is it 25 they have 25 on the game day roster and they can have x amount of player like 30 players on this team and then 30 players on this team 30 players on this team 30 players on this team um type type of deal um so they they can get more professionals than say an nba team um but their rosters are bigger so just kind of some of that just all kind of depends but um yeah man yeah, but you're also the, the other things like the professional rowing team. Who's playing professional crew? Pe- people do. People do. Yeah, they have the, the races, and you know, just like the yachting teams in the Ivy League, they have professional yacht teams. You know, that are sponsored. It's it's they have avenues for for a lot of people. A lot of people go pro in sports you wouldn't think are pro sports. There's a lot of golfers that are that go pro. You know, they even have pro softball now. So, but the rowing team, though. Hey, man, that's a serious sport in those Ivy League schools, for instance, and 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 some of those California schools. Oh, you oh you row? Shit, them chicks. You go crew. Home. They about crew. To- I'm about yeah, to give you this. I'm about cruise, to give you. If you're on the cruise yeah, squad, they don't row. You can get crew. paid for school, I mean, but once you get past school, what happens? Well, you join a yachting club and, and, yeah. and you know and go compete in those private competitions that are sponsored. Man, if you go to Stanford and you row crew, you get all the ass. Like, <laughs> that you you probably don't you probably don't get as much ass as if you play quarterback for Notre Dame. But you know, hey, you know, I I, I don't know. Right, if you were on a hoop team at UCLA or something, you know, I don't know, I don't know. Right, but hey, I'm telling you, if you if you go to Stanford or you go to Yale or some Harvard, or you row crew, you that nigga. That's true. It yeah, makes so, sense. I just yes. know that I've watched a bunch of strange, obscure professional sports, and I don't know <laughs> that I've ever watched anything outside of the Olympics, a professional crew competition. Hey, let me tell you something. Right now, in the middle of this COVID, I will watch professional ditch dig. I would, I would watch fucking people row crew right now. If there was like shit, the well, only sport we got is crew rowing, single man. I would be like, fuck it, like, <laughs> it's, <laughs> fuck it. I'm in. Let's go. It's sports, nigga. I'm watching that shit, dog. 
Yeah, they was like, we just can we can just put somebody in the river and let them, you know. I, I would watch that shit. Fuck it, I gotta see some sports real soon. I'm gonna lose my mind. Um, yeah, man. Appreciate appreciate y'all chiming in on on, on wacky side of the week, man. We'll try we'll try to bring you some more interesting stats next week. But man, um, I, I gotta say oh, this though. How you gonna my have bad, my bad, show my twelve? Bad. How you gonna have show twelve and not bring up the MJ documentary though? Oh, hey, man. Hey man, I was the first of all. I have I haven't brought it up because I haven't I haven't seen it. Oh oh if you, oh. If, okay. if, you had, if you had listened to the Defy Life show already, you would know that I haven't seen it. Um, but yeah, West Coast, did you know I hadn't seen it? I knew, and he knows that I haven't seen it. So yeah, so I, I haven't I really haven't brought it up because I haven't watched it. But then it's not that I haven't wanted to watch it. Uh, I just been busy this week, and um. I, I, I am gonna watch it and catch up, and when I do, because it's a series. So when I when I yeah. watch it, you know, you know, when West Coast watch it, then then we we we'll chop. Gonna watch, he's gonna wait to watch it till it's all out for the most part. Oh, well, I'm not gonna wait that long. I am not gonna wait that long. I'm gonna try I'm to not catch the him whole up. thing, but I need a good solid binge out of it. If it's a ten part series, like I'm gonna be mad if I stop at two and gotta wait eight more weeks for the rest of it. <laughs> Well, I, I'm not gonna be able to wait that long, West Coast. But I, I am gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dig over. I'm gonna try to dig over it some this weekend. But um, yeah, man, I had, I did, I hadn't get. It's been crazy at work, so I hadn't, I hadn't really been able to kind of get away from, from that. Um, and then in my spare time, I've been still binge watching other shit. And and I and I started, I started playing Red Dead Redemption, Red Dead Redemption Two again. So, which is an amazing game. Um, if you disagree, then fight me. <laughs> but so that's why we haven't that's why we haven't talked about it. But yes, there is a Michael Jordan documentary out there, everybody. I'm I'm told it's amazing, it's fire, but I don't I don't like to speak on things I absolutely I know absolutely nothing about. Um, so far it's fire. So far. So far so good. That's all I gotta say. No doubt. No doubt. Well we got a rec- we got one recommendation from someone this so from the the scene the business. So um, you know we gonna we gonna check it out. We gonna check it out, and we and when we do, we gonna talk about it. So stay tuned. Um, but that's your that's your answer, Hollywood Paul. Does it, does that satisfy you? It does for right now. For now. No, no doubt. No, appreciate that. Um, petty party politics. <laughs> Man, so well, the 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 name of the uh, official the stimulus act that they that congress passed you know a couple weeks ago was called the 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 cares act or the cares package um they're working on a new one um let's see let's see if we can find the name of this because i want i want to talk about this with you guys and kind of let you know a couple of things about it so um they're, they're working on a new um, this 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 legislation is actually entitled the Emergency Money for the People Act. So it expands upon the original CARE Act in a couple of ways. Um, the first one is that qualifying Americans would receive monthly payments um, for 12 months um, instead of just the single, you know, one twelve hundred dollar payment that they got, or or you know that that they got. Uh, a couple weeks ago or, or last month or whatever. And so that payment will qualify for qualify for Americans for 12 months uh, for everyone that qualifies. And instead of it being a one-time payment of $1,200, it's a $2,000 payment. Kind of very similar. Remember when we first launched this and I was like, Canada's doing $2,000 for their citizens. And then I said, but I realize Canada's a lot smaller than we are. I think they're actually smaller than, than the one state of California. Um, but the difference is the United States makes more money than like any other country on the planet. Like so um where Canada can do it with their with their national GDP, the United States could do something like that as well. But so let me let me get back to it. Um the other difference is Americans that are sixteen years of age and up um, who make less than one hundred and thirty thousand dollars a year annually would receive two thousand dollars per month, 
Married couples will receive four thousand dollars a month if they make less than the combined two sixty. And because the one and the difference there is, if you were a kid, um, eighteen or or seventeen and under, and you were claimed on your parents' taxes, you were not eligible for any of the previous stimulus money. This would make kids eighteen, I'm sorry, sixteen and up, eligible for stimulus money. Um. Though they changed the way in which you could get it, um, you could get it based on um, you could get a check, direct deposit, but you can also have it, you know, go 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 to your debit card or even mobile payment platforms such as PayPal and Venmo. Um, And college students and disabled um, dependents would also be eligible um, for for a payment. So um, income eligibility will also not be determined by your most recent pay stubs um, if you're not eligible based on past tax information. So uh, could be. So those are the four differences in the new um, – Emergency Money for the People Act that is being speared by California Representative Ro Khanna and Ohio State Representative uh, – the state of Ohio is Representative um, Tim Ryan. So this is – right now, this is the legislation that's being put forward um, in the democratically controlled House of Representatives. There's no way that this version of this goes to the Senate and passes, but they are aware that they have to do something. So have now that I've said all that, I need for my co-host to chime in. West Coast J, what you thinking? Good idea, bad idea, like it, love it. Uh, now, keep in mind, this money is com- – like this is not a handout. This is income. This is going to be earned income on your next year's taxes or your years after that taxes or something like that. But you will give this money back to the federal government um, unless they change something in this law that they didn't have in the first law. So that twelve hundred dollars that you got or whatever you got, you will give that money back to the IRS. Um, That was this is really more like a loan. Um, So now now having said that, fellas, what you thinking? West Coast Jay chime in. Well, for the majority of Americans that don't have any way to make money um, legally, they are this the two thousand is probably too high of a number. Uh, I understand why a California senator would say two thousand because California costs too much to live in, but two thousand dollars is probably too much of a number. Uh, if I'm looking at this correctly, that would turn into roughly $315.4 billion in monthly payments. And that's not counting the dependent children, which is an additional 500 a month. So I feel like it's not going to be past the Senate just because that number is too high. Now, one of the uh, other things that they're trying to package in here um, represent representative omar of minnesota she's proposing the emergency rent and mortgage cancellation act in which all rent and mortgage payments on primary residences would be canceled until the end of the national emergency or for one year and then people who are landlords could apply to have those losses covered through uh, the department of hud the housing and urban development and there's no restriction here, so they're trying to do that. And then there's another where they're trying to propose a, a payroll tax waiver. What so is that? There's a there's a lot that they're trying to put into a second stimulus, or at the very least that they're proposing. Now, is it going to be something that's necessary? Yes, most likely. People are going to need another like this first one was a it was a band-aid it was a it was a good way to for people to at the very least know that the government is aware and is trying to do something 
Like, right. It, it helps no, civil no, unrest. I feel like the you know? uh, overcorrection, like going up to 2000 plus the additional 500 for kids, maybe an overcorrection that we can't necessarily <clears throat> pay back. Um, the that. Senate, the Senate will never let that pass. Trust me, they will. They will never let that pass. <laughs> but why do you? Why do you? And 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 in Hollywood, I want to get to you, but I want to. I want to ask, like, why do you feel like? Why do you feel like two thousand dollars is not enough? Why, why do you? I'm sorry. Why do you feel like that's too much? Uh, I think mostly it's because of the places where the representatives are from 2000 is probably not enough but for most places in the country i feel like 2000 is probably too mo- well not yeah too much too much because the when you think about what people's regular bills are my bills are way more you know, than mortgages and all of the etc like how many people are spending more than 2000 a month me Easily. Oh yeah. Easily. Oh, yeah, we're junior executive. <laughs> oh wow. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Me, like you said, how many people? Me, I'm one of them. I'm people. He oh, thinks he's people. people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but either way, the whole point is the it's supposed to provide something for people. Right. And right. The two thousand is just that. Maybe I'm stuck on the number itself. Um, and maybe I'm so also you, speaking from a position of I'm still working from home, so like it's, it's not right. I was gonna say need, it's, it's so but it's many people that I would out enjoy. there. Right, right. But what I'm saying is like they're talking. There's a lot of dude. First of all, there's now 30 million people on unemployment, and and there are states that aren't even paying 20 percent of their unemployment claims. There's people. I'm. T- there are people out there about to go fucking crazy. I'm telling you, the go- the federal government is gonna have to do something. The states have run out of money. They don't, like the the states' economies are tapped. I, it's, I'm telling. There's so much. There's so much ugly underneath. I think I said this. There's so much ugly right underneath the waves. <laughs> Hollywood Paul, man, chime in, man. What you thinking? Well, I think the the first twelve hundred was a good way for the federal government to um, just solidify its power. Basically, it was it was a way to pacify civil unrest, um, and um, it was smart. It was it was a good thing to do. It it it, it band aids some some issues as how, as uh, West Coast said. Um, I think the you know proposing two thousand a month. I don't think it's too much. Um, and I, I'm working from home and I'm an essential worker at the hotel. So I, I, I haven't been affected financially by, uh, the coronavirus and the shutdown. Um, besides all, you know, there's other things that I could be making money off of that I'm not, but, you know, as far as, uh, just being able to make ends meet, I'm not, I'm not hurting for that. So, but like, like West Coast said, I would be something I would more or less enjoy and, you know, plant you know seeds with to grow uh, financially uh, more so than use it to catch up and, and stay afloat like a lot of people who are not essential at one of my jobs who I know are they're going through it like they're standing in two hour long lines at food banks mm. uh, you know I mean that's I mean to the point where I'm like what can I do to help these people that I work with and then asking the question, damn, should I, can I, should I extend, it's not even can I, should I extend myself to open that gate? You know, you know, when you feed a, a feral cat, you know, they tell the other ones and the other ones start coming to eat at your back door too. You know, and then do I want to, do I want to, you know what I'm saying? Do I want to get involved to that matter? Um, I just try to help out with information as much as possible without having to extend myself because, you know, in popular times, once you open the door, they rush it. So you can't really do that. But point is, it's a lot of people I know personally going through shit, and that, that two thousand, it it will it will. One thing I don't like about the twelve hundred or the two thousand, I don't I don't I don't agree with the paying back um, notion of it. Not if not if big corporations and industries constantly get bailed out. 
And I, would, I mean, billions are written off saying the forgiven, forgotten. I, I don't, I just don't agree with that because I don't agree with helping but not helping. Meaning, you know, if you're in a hole, money, and I, I and I came to you and I said, hey man, you know, you're in a twelve foot hole. Mm-hmm. I I give you a a twelve foot ladder, right? And then I pull you out of that hole and I turn around and throw you in a six foot hole. <laughs> and I say, w- w- what are you like five nine, money? Yeah. You're five mm-hmm. nine. You should you should be able to figure out how to get out that six foot hole. Right. You're five nine. But my point is, I helped you. But did I help you? I took you. I took you from one hole and put you in another. Yeah, you made an interesting point. You said helping without helping, and that's just stuck. That's it just as soon as you said that, it stuck with me. I mean, you it's like think? I used to tell my dad that. My my dad is a is a is a good example. I love that man. He's my hero. But my, like my dad is like your dad. Like go look it up. Go go go. To, you know, don't ask me. <laughs> fuck out, though. Go look this shit up. Then come teach me. But anyway, um, my pops, he would be like, um, and, and this is not with me because he he. If I would ask my dad for something like that, he'd be like, no, like money or something like that. He'd be like, no, go figure it out. You know what I'm saying? I made I made you capable, motherfucker. What you calling me for? Like, would you would you fucking me now? But that's just tough love from him. If right. I need, if I really needed it, my dad is not going to let me go without because he is doing very well in life and very capable of whatever. But point is, with my my siblings, I've seen my dad like. You know, <laughs> he made like, like for instance, he made loan like my sister money, right, for for something, and then he'll he'll say, okay, you got to pay me back with interest, and now she's she's struggling to still pay the next months whatever, and then pay him back on top of that, and I'm like, well, dad, you just you got her out of a hole, but you put her in another one. You're helping, but you're not helping. She called you, so she didn't have to pay nobody back, motherfucker. You her dad. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what she called you for. She ain't call you to get to, for you to say, okay, look, I'll pull you up, but then I'll put you back down. You know what I mean? And I, and I get why you're doing it, teaching her how to be responsible, things of that nature. But that ain't helping. You know, it's it's just not. You're 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 relieving stress for a moment. You're just you're just redirecting it. That's all you're doing. And and that's the that's the you know, in America a lot of corporations are designed like that, like the banking system. Like, oh, I have these problems with overdrafts. Well, open the, open this savings account or this mortgage account or this other account. It, we could waive those <laughs> those fees if you open this account today. And guess what? We're going to start charging you other fees on this account that you're not going to know about. They basically just redirect your debt and stress. And that $2,000 and, and the $1,200, anything that they're they're holding a tab on for you, is just redirecting this stress and that debt. Like the, the stress and heavy debt of right now is just being redirected to another time when you file your taxes. Yeah, now now that I'm thinking about the amounts, if it's two thousand dollars a month for let's say six months, that's twelve grand. I don't I don't want I don't want so there there's got to there's got to be something different in this law that says this is not like the American people don't have to pay this back or or at least all of it back like. I don't want I don't want a twelve thousand dollar tax bill. I already complain about the taxes I got to pay now. Like, um, I mean, think about how that's going to affect people who you know get who depend on tax money for certain things for their children. Like, not the ones that use it to get fly for a moment, but I mean, people who like plan out. Like my homeboy, uh, he had to get his daughter braces, and he just paid for his son to get braces on the health spending account, so he's tapped out. So he knew, okay, my taxes are coming back. You know, I got to get something done to his house. It was either like with the AC or something else, but he was going to have enough money to to get his daughter braces. How would that, how would paying back this $2,000 a month for six months or 12 months, how would that affect that money? You know what I mean? Like how how would that affect his deductions? How would that affect his refund? Stuff like that, that people right now might not be thinking about. Once you that once they get oh we're gonna get these checks y'all it's going around Facebook it's on the news you know what I'm saying they're gonna start getting this two two grand a month but are you really you, you know you're just redirecting your stress your attention right now um is it helping you for real or is it helping but not helping oh. that's just, that's just my take on it you know what's close to that what you what you think I'm over here looking up. Mortgage payments, and now I got to thinking. So, the median mortgage payment or median mortgage payment in the United States is one thousand twenty nine dollars. That's the, that's the mid the midpoint. So, if um, typical household, typical homeowner, 
is usually a family of what two parents and 1.5 kid so that person right there those that household immediately would get $4,750 a month uh, using this proposed plan if if they're they're together if they're married they're, so, if they're in the same household I mean like I said I don't this the the 2000 number I feel like it's a little arbitrary. I don't feel like it's I mean it's I not going like to be, right first number. of all it's not going to be $2000. There's no way. There's no way that Lindsey Graham, Mitch McConnell and all those guys are saying yeah, we're going to So it'll be by the time it passes the Senate because something something is going to pass the Senate. It just won't be this. Correct. Right. Like I just feel like that they're and you know what honestly this might just be a negotiating ploy. Like, I'm going to start high. Right, right, right. So, maybe, because yeah, like, maybe what they really want is another 1200 and they and say, they say, we can negotiate our way down the 1200 if we start at two fucking thousand. Because we know Andrew Yang was trying to give out 1200 a month for every year. The, for every you know, American. Yeah, that was universal. For every American. That was universal. So, and, and, and supposedly, according to his plan, the money is there. Um, so I, I feel you on the bargaining chip and I, and I agree. I, I see what you're saying about being too much. I think I agree with you on it being too much. If you got to pay that back, it's kind of too much if you don't, because people can start, I mean, it will boost the economy The stores. Businesses will be booming again when stuff is open. People will be spending money like a motherfucker, which is good, um, to a, in a sense, but I mean, I don't know if you, if it's, you got to pay it back. I don't really see it helping. And if, if you don't got to pay it back, I guess it just puts the country's debt deficit way, you know, higher. So it's kind of like a lose lose for lose lose for the country, I guess. I, I don't know. I mean, it could help though. Yeah. If there's a way to work it out to where it doesn't. Because I mean, of course, you know, I'm a, I'm a type of person that I, I know. Okay, yeah, we got debt in our country, but do we? You know, so I'm that type of person. So I'm like, I understand the numbers. You, you got to tally that shit and keep track of it, and. and and all that, and it's 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 kind of like a, a mountain we won't never climb. Uh, but with that being said, can we can this not be just another thing you write off? You mm-hmm. write off forty billion dollars we send to to other countries for aid, for military aid, and they use it on education and universal health care. We do that all the time. We write that off mm-hmm. and write it off to our labor that we're trying to get us back into right now. So. I, I see why West Coast is saying it's too much. I could I could see that. I could understand that argument as well. Um especially if you gotta pay it back. No doubt. No doubt. Well, gentlemen, I hey, we're gonna we're gonna put this topic the real great, great, great topic, man. Um very, very interesting. Appreciate the, all the feedback. Listeners chime in, let us know what you think. All right, y'all, y'all ready for our main topic of the night? For the show. No doubt, no doubt. It's it's also really. I think all of our topics kind of touch the coronavirus and just how they Im- impact things. But this, this one does as well. Our main topic for the evening is going to be so uh, West Coast um, Hollywood. I'm sure you've seen the numbers. Um, double, double fatality rate in the United States for African Americans for this coronavirus. Um. This is this is taking out minorities, black folks, left and right, Hispanics, people of color. Um, the administrations mentioned it. Multiple governors have mentioned it. So it is a real thing. Um, so I want because I know like in it, like Italy and Spain and all that where death has also been ravaged, and there's not a humongous black population in those european countries so i just want to keep this i want to just i just want to keep this conversation to the united states so my my question the topic of the night is when these disasters happen these, these disasters natural pandemics whatever when negative things happen in our country why is it that those things always seem to impact communities of color the hardest considering that per capita we're only 
you know, black people specifically are only like 13 percent of the population. How do you have such a small segment of your population always be the majority people that are impacted by these things when they happen? Um, Hollywood Paul, I'm going to start with you. I think it's because uh, those areas are, you know, um, less financially fruitful. <laughs> they're, they're poor people. Um, poor people always get the shit in. They have less resources. They have, you know, less uh, ways to get good health care, um, less supplies, all kind of shit, man. It's just, they, I mean, it's, it's a, if the city had a blackout, the, the urban rural areas that are low income, would they would work on getting their power back last. It's kind of the same thing. Whenever something happens, it's going to affect this area more because the intention is going to be where the, you know, the money is. First, uh, that's my take on it. No doubt, no doubt. West Coast, what you think? I now completely understand your question. I think that much, first and foremost. Um, earlier, I was like, "What are you? What are you saying?" I'm sure that there's some. But then, as soon as you added the word "death," it was like, "Oh, oh, okay." This makes way more sense. So I'll go to the CDC website. You know, I always got to check your numbers. We're looking at, um, for the percentage of deaths, 50% of the current deaths are white people, just non-Hispanic white. But when you look at the weighted distribution of the population, Mm -hmm. there's only 39%. And then when you go to black and Latino and non-Hispanic Asian, we're looking at 18 and a half, 27.3 and 12.9 in that order, which is clearly way more than 39%. Um, A lot of the reasons are because of what Paul just touched on. The resources that are historically not given to neighborhoods that are predominantly minority those resources are always funneled to the haves versus the have nots and unfortunately those people are still considered those neighborhoods those areas those regions are still considered the have nots so since there's not that there's a general like you will the little things, education is poorer in those areas. Um, so as a result, they the way they even interpret the, the information that's being disseminated could be completely askew from the way that for lack of a better way to put it, white America, non-Hispanic white America is interpreting the information. It could be as simple as just a comprehension thing, or it could be as sinister as well, the money from the elite pays for the elite to be fine and Uh then their immediate people and so as you keep going down the list for you know then then those people and then families of those people by the time you get to the bottom of it well there aren't very many wealthy elite non-hispanic whites like everybody except for non-hispanic whites there aren't very many of them Right, and so the money doesn't get disseminated. The the, the health care, the education, the, the all of the things that are necessary for people to be prepared. Like more more often than not, you'll find that a poor neighborhood is going to be less prepared for a situation like this. Mm. When when. Less prepared as meaning like having the available resources or the available people in government to help help them with it. Both. Look what happened yeah, when both. toilet paper disappeared. People in the hoods were the ones we were hearing were selling rolls because it, once it gets it, it gets almost like a the hood always will resemble the Sodom and Gomorrah stories of like uh, lawlessness when shit goes gets fucked up. And there's no order in the hood. 
the strong survive. It's Darwinism, though. Period. And they're less prepared to just go. Like me and my girl went and dropped four hundred dollars on groceries. You know what I'm saying? And oh. there's families that do that every month. It's just two of us. You know what I mean? Why would we do that every month? We don't budget four hundred dollars a month. Yeah, I might eat like a horse, but I, it's still not four hundred dollars a month worth of eating. You know what I mean? Um. So and and then that's not to mention the toiletries we wouldn't bought and the amount of money we spend on a daily basis and have to keep constantly making in. Point is, a lot of people in the hood don't have that. So they're not going to be prepared for uh, to deal with the pandemic. They're not going to be prepared to deal with shit. Um, unless it's a zombie apocalypse, my nigga. People in the hood will, will survive that shit. But some shit to where oh, we, we got to go get medicated, they got to depend on the government to give them that. They, they can't just, you know, go to the doctor and pay for shit with, without any insurance. There's probably like four people living in a, a project right now that don't have insurance. But the person that's getting the voucher has Medicaid. You get what I'm saying? Right. So on those same lines. Yeah. The hoods tend to be real densely packed. They do. So there's more for an airborne virus like this, when you have four people living in a studio apartment versus somebody who's got a three bedroom home with a bunch of square footage and can't actually like even in the house if one person goes out. Well, now the next house has also got four people living in the studio apartment. The house after that might have six. Right. In the hood, you know what I'm saying? Whereas the people who are, once you, the, the people who have set it up so that they live out in the burbs, they're living farther away from the, the densely packed areas, well, there's less of a chance for them to get the, an airborne virus from another person. The people are farther apart. That's true. Right. Right. And, 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 and I'm less prepared. And I and I think it's I think it's I think it goes back even further than that. I think it goes back to the fact that like cities in these communities, even back fifty, you know, forty years ago, the minority communities that's where they that's where they put the factory that pollute that polluted the air and the water. That's where they put the you know the store that you know that, that released the chemicals. It's you know that's it's where they you know like s- let's not put it here where these Caucasian people live. We're gonna put this we're gonna put this paint f- this paint factory, this lead factory in this black community, right? This Hispanic community, and that was sadly to say that was by design. That was on purpose. That was intentional. Um. This, this blacks are two times more likely to work in the service industry. Well, what what industry is being decimated totally by this disease? The service industry. The yeah, service industry is destroyed, right? So, now. so you're talking about people with no jobs. Then, when you lose your jobs, you know what you also lose? You also lose your health care. You can't get health care. Then you then you're exposed to all these things. So you're you've already then you're you're preconditioned to eat a certain food. So your health your health is dictated by all of these factors, all these factors of where you live, what you eat, what you can afford to eat, the 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 immediate envi- the immediate environment and, and and healthiness of your water and your food, and then boom, you can't work, and then boom, you don't have health care. And then boom, there's a fucking airborne pandemic. And so your health automatically deteriorates, like, almost right. instantly. You can't afford to just sit up in a crib. You have to constantly keep going out to make things happen just to survive. You mean to tell me people in the hood, unless unless you're a dope boy and you've been doing really well, you can't just stay up in the hood. And even then, you know, you ain't got insurance, bro. That dope money stopped the moment you stay up in the house. So you're, I mean... It's so many, so many people have house stores that they pay bills off of that their vouchers don't cover. Like, straight up. A lot of people in the hood bundle. I mean, and they, they're they constantly interacting with other people. Right. I mean, just to, just to survive because they lost their job. They lost their health care. So now they got to make it happen. 
Right. So, so when people talk up, when people talk to me about not believing that there is a, and, and maybe it's not so much of one today, but when you couple that with the fact that in the nineties, in the in the early two thousands, like they by design, black people couldn't get business loans, black pe- black people couldn't get mortgage loans, um, and even today, where if you have a black sounding name, a company is like three times or 72 percent chance that they're just going to throw your resume in the trash like when, when people talk about trying to deny a systemic system of racism in this country it blows my mind it blows my mind um when you can have, have you a seen... law enforcement oh sorry but i didn't mean to interrupt but have you seen um the show that just came out the netflix show hashtag black af I have not. Like, is every episode basically has a lesson about how all this shit came from slavery at some point, right? Like, even up to the, the, I think the lesson from this one right now is that the way that the way that the lines are drawn, even for neighborhoods in major cities the there's far more space and far fewer people in wealthier areas whereas in poorer areas lower in the, in the urban environment for lack of a better way to put it or the hood as people keep calling it in a hood it's all these buildings is on top of one another and there's so many more people in these buildings all on top of one another. The way that it was set up in the slave, I mean, think about it from that perspective. In slavery, we had the one big house with the plantation owner and his family living in it. Uh Always his, never hers. Because only right, a they, free white male. So big, was, kids can get lost in it and run around and play in it. They get sick, you can quarantine them off in a room on the West Wing in it. Right. Mm. But the slave quarters was a whole bunch of little, it was basically a little favela, a little shanty town that was a whole a bunch bar. of people all in one very small place. Right. Like, unfortunately, that hasn't really changed you go to any major city and when you get to the hood you'll notice that the buildings start getting the 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 living spaces started getting tighter but it seems like there's more people right so even with the the latinos and all of the etc all of the different minorities kind of have the same all the immigrants kind of have the same mentality like people make jokes about it all the time that you know if you if there's always going to be 700 Mexicans in one house or there's always going to be a whole bunch of uh, in Chinatown for example in San Francisco there was always a bunch of a whole bunch of people in one place like whole bunch of people and when you have that many kind of that many people all it takes is one infected person and now pro- disproportionate numbers of more people will be infected just because you are in contact and in such close quarters. No doubt. No doubt. So we got to be so we got to be conscious of that as a as a community, as a people, right? So we got to know that you know, we we got to be careful when this type of shit happens. We really do. Um and when it's these autoimmune diseases and these, you know, diabetes and COPD and all these little weird little diseases that that we get at a higher clip than other people in the country. And we just have to be aware of that and just try to definitely, you know, make decisions that at least kind of put you in the best position to be safe. I, re- I read a meme. I don't want to I don't want to. It was earlier today. I didn't I didn't. I didn't capture it or anything. I just kind of read it and thought it was very interesting. But someone said, um, you want me to die. You want me to put myself at risk or die for the economic 
recovery of this country. And then it said, no, thanks. My ancestors already did that. And I just thought, wow. I thought, wow, that's, that shit was powerful. No, thanks. My ancestors already did that. Um, that's real. That's it's real. Very profound. Very. Yeah, that's heavy. Um, that's heavy. That's heavy. But um, speaking of things, is heavy. Oh, but do y- do y'all do y'all wanna y'all got anything more on that or or or, or we you know because I'm about to I'm about to wrap us up. No, I'm good, man. Think no we, doubt, we, think we touched on it, man. No doubt, no doubt. Hey, well, speaking of things, is heavy. I know the last couple of weeks I tried to end the show. Y'all jumped in there with some more stuff, some more stuff to say. So <laughs> I don't want. <laughs> I wanted to give y'all an opportunity to chime in. Like I said, this was going to be a heavy, heavy show. Deep show, man. Um, episode 12, Unsupervised the Spinoff Podcast, man. We're going to go ahead and zip this thing up, man. West Coast J, zip them up. Yeah, man. Uh, thanks for joining us again. Hopefully you are out there actually being safe and only being out there when you have to be out there as opposed to just going out because you feel the need to want to be out. Uh, practice your social distancing. Um, I'm actually probably going to steal a little bit of Money's Thunder because I, I do want to say a thank you as well to all of the first responders, all of the people that are out on the front lines every day, still doing their work, still putting up with people coming in, breathing all on you. Like, I like how most places have now put up a little plastic barrier that's directly in front of your who you have to be in contact with. I always thought that was cool. But other than that, um, you guys continue to be safe. Continue to treat each other the way you want to be treated and be excellent to one another. And that's what I got for this week. No doubt, man. No doubt. Um, Hollywood Paul, man, do me a favor and zip him up. Man, you ain't got much, man. You know, just uh, be good to one another. Be be cognizant of your moves. Be meaning, be self aware. You know, if you're doing something, be aware of the purpose of why you're doing it. Um, that can a lot of times we get caught up in, in, in being on autopilot. We move through life when we speak to people. Uh, just be be very aware. Be mindful. Um, and of, of course, you know, uh, thank you to everyone that's out there, especially, you know, I got family out there that are in the medical field, constantly dealing with people every day, putting themselves at, at risk. And uh, uh, thank you to my hats, you, everybody that's going through it financially uh, because of this situation. I, I feel for you. I really do. Hold your head up. Get you some side hustles going. Don't give up. Hope. Stay positive. And definitely listen to the show. You might might gain something from it. And you might get a good laugh. You might get a good laugh. <laughs> no doubt. I know. Hey, I know we was on the more serious side of things today. Um, but we we went we went over some serious topics, man. So, you know, sometimes sometimes it's like that. Sometimes it's not all about the jokes. Sometimes it's about bringing it the real, raw, even unsupervised. Um, but we still bring it to you nonetheless. We, we, episode twelve. This has been. We have enjoyed bringing it to you. I don't have anything too crazy, man. Shout out to the team. Shout out to the family, man. Defy Life. Don't forget to go out to defylifegear.com. Check out our unsupervised spinoff podcast gear. Um, and copy one. Copy a couple. Um, if you see something else out there that you like, cop that too, man. Um, go to defylife.com for our content that's written. And um, defylifepods.com for our entire slate of podcast shows on our network man the network is strong hey man i just want to give a shout out appreciate everything that you first responders are doing um once again i'm going to say this until i can't say it anymore um these people are out here risking their lives to save a life to save a life and i i can't i can't i cannot respect you enough um, and more for what you do. You out there putting your lives on the line every day, working double, sometimes triple shifts, 16, 17, 18 hours a day, not even sleeping. All they ask is that we do our part and stay your ass in the house, man. Let these people get home safely to their families to the best that we can. And um, you already know what I'm going to say, man. If you're not rocking with the Fala, what's your life about? 
We out. Welcome to the Defy Life Podcast. Join JR, Thomas, and Al as they take on topics in sports, politics, current events, family, and more. Insightful, hilarious, always unique. New episode every Wednesday. Powered by the Defy Life Podcast Network. Listen at defylifepods.com and everywhere else your favorite podcasts are available. If you're not rocking with Defy Life, what's your life about? 